Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Macroverse. Today, we're going to talk about the Kansas City Fed Labor Market Conditions Index and how it can be used to better understand the state of the U.S. economy. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We do have several different tiers available, including a free one. Links down in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we do occasionally jump into the macroverse to better understand the overall macro conditions that we currently face within the United States. And this index, I think, provides a unique perspective. Now, there have, of course, been all sorts of indicators. Some are more, you know, some are more optimistic, some are more pessimistic. And the truth is, is there's plenty of reasons for, for sort of both sides to find evidence to support whatever view they want. But this indicator is interesting because it actually combines different things, all right? <clears throat> so this is sort of looking at not only the momentum in labor markets, but also the level of activity. And it's actually a combination of 24 different labor market data sets, including things like the unemployment rate, which we have videos on, um, the uh, initial claims, which we've talked about, and of course, the labor, the labor force participation rate. So it includes a lot of different indicators to go in to measuring this market conditions index. Now, we could always point to things like two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, like we had back in the early, the first half of 2022 as, as a reason for a recession. But the truth is that the US economy has, re has remained relatively resilient and the labor market has remained secularly tight. And the truth again is, you know, when you look at the labor market, <coughs> we're sitting at a really low unemployment rate, about 3.4%. Now, it is true that the unemployment rate tends to get, the, the, the labor market gets extremely tight, usually just before it, it makes a, a big move to the upside because the Fed is actively fighting against it. It tends to bring high inflation, and that's something the Fed doesn't want to see. So, of course, they want to see some loosening of labor market conditions. But the point is to say that until that actually manifests itself, the U.S. economy has still remained relatively resilient. So one thing to consider, we have seen a lot of layoffs uh, this year and, and last year as well. But so far, the U.S. economy has been able to absorb that. And one of the reasons, I suppose, is because the, the, the participation rate in the labor force is still... Um, not really, I think, where, where the Fed would want it to be. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I do think there's a lot of people that are just simply choosing not to, you know, not to go back into the labor force, especially after the last two to three years. So <clears throat> that's something to consider. Um, but when you look at this chart, it, it does tell a, fair, a fairly compelling story. And, and, you know, one of those stories is until you really see this make that big move to the downside, right? It's hard to call it a recession. Now, it doesn't mean a recession's not coming. And I, I've talked about this before. There is a, a good chance that this inevitably will resolve in a recession. But that could be six months from now. It could be 12 months from now. We simply do not know. And I, I think the average time, again, after the inversion of the yield curve is is like, you know, about a year and a half sometimes before you'll actually see see a recession um, come into play. But when you look at this, what you'll notice is that, you know, in, in, in back during the dot-com crash, we saw the labor market conditions index here slowly go down while we were also in sort of the first stage of the bear market, right? Like the first half of the bear market, if you will. And then the, the latter half of the bear market occurred once the unemployment rate really took or once the unemployment rate we know took the plunge off the cliff, but also a lot of the uh, other labor market conditions also started to, go, to sort of um, um, go down, you know, and, or some of them went up, right? Like initial claims would have been going up. But in general, the U.S. economy was deteriorating at that time. And sort of that was the second half of, of the bear market. So the first half was, you know, the, the economy was holding on. Uh, the second half, the economy wasn't holding on, you know. And then you can also see the financial crisis where, it seemed like things were starting to recover, but then ultimately we saw another another downturn. One thing to note, okay, and this is important, and this is and we've talked about this before. The the market is forward looking, so you know the S and P five hundred 
will will likely bottom well before uh, you know this bottoms if it goes below zero. Now you could always make the case, well, what happens if it doesn't go below zero and we we get this no landing scenario that a lot of people are talking about? Well, that's always a possibility, but I will I will say, you know, I I can't believe how quickly we went from hard landing to soft landing to no landing to rocket emojis all within the span of like two or three months. And and just remember that I I do think within the context of history that is actually a natural progression, right? You know, you everyone we get to the point where we think a hard landing is going to occur and then you get a bounce and then we start talking about a soft landing and then it seems like the worst is behind us but then the reality of the situation is we still haven't even felt the rate hikes from last year yet i mean we've talked before about how it can often take 12 months to fill those rate hikes the first rate hike was in march of 2022 so arguably we've only you know just now begun to fill to feel the the initial rate hikes that we had from almost a year ago. And so I, I think we have to take that into serious consideration when, when you know, prematurely declaring that there's not going to be any type of landing, right? Whether it be soft or hard landing and just sort of calling it a no landing scenario. I think that that might be a little premature to call, especially again, because I, I don't think we've really felt the full effect of the rate hikes and because the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates uh, because inflation is sticky, you know, and we are still technically in a period of disinflation, but it's not coming down quickly enough. I, 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 that's the issue, I think. And so we run the risk of continuing to tighten into a weakening economy. So again, the U.S. economy has been relatively strong for a while, but the Federal Reserve runs the risk of continuing to tighten into a weaker economy if they don't get to the appropriate terminal rate as quickly as they can. And, and so this was sort of one of the arguments we, I used to say um, that I, I thought the last rate hike should have been 50 basis points. But then, you know, leading into the weeks before, before it, I mean, it seemed quite obvious that the market was suggesting it was only going to be 25. And, and so we, you know, I just said, all right, well, it's going to be 25. And we're likely just going to experience more 25 basis point rate hikes is, is my guess, because I, I, I think it would send a very um confusing message to markets if they go 25 and then back to 50 and then back to 25 it would sort of seem like they don't really know what they're doing if they were to do that um so i think they're probably just going to keep going with 25 basis points and the again the, the the risk that we must think about is do they continue to tighten like this later into the year when the u.s economy is is starting to show signs of weakness from the rate hikes from last year okay <coughs> So that's what, you know, that's ultimately, I think, the risk. And that will come into play, I think, in the second half of this year. You know, and I, I mean, arguably, we're getting a 25 basis point rate hike next meeting, probably one after that in, you know, in later on in the summer. So I, I guess the question is, is will they reach the appropriate terminal rate and, and hold it there before the U.S. economy really starts to deteriorate? But again, what you'll notice is that the S&P bottoms before this does, right? It bottomed here in October of 2002, and then this metric didn't bottom until March of 2003. So if you had waited for this to bottom, um, it would have been a half, you'd been a half year too late almost. And you wouldn't have even known this was the bottom, but it does go to show you that there's of course some merit in, in a, you know, especially as you get into some low levels, right? Like in a DCA strategy, just because you don't know where the bottom's going to be. And then over here again, right? I mean, the market bottomed, before this metric bottomed in 2020. Same thing, right? It, the market bottomed right before this one did, by about a week, right? But still technically, I mean, it all happened so quickly. Um, and, and you can see here, right, the market bottomed and then this metric bottomed basically one week later. So right now, this metric slowly moving down, but it hasn't really taken that plunge. You know, and I, I don't know what exactly would cause us uh, or what, what time frame it would take that plunge, whether it's going to be in three months or, or in nine months. I do know that when you look at the context of history and you read articles about what happened in the past, there's always sort of this idea that the unemployment rate's low. So, you know, hard landing avoided, right? Or even soft landing avoided, right? Like no landing possible, um, but you still run the risk. And I, you know, I, I have had some people ask me, well, what would be some of the reasons that the unemployment rate would go up? Because we still have, you know, a relatively low labor force participation rate. 
You know, I mean, there's just a lot of people that don't want to work. And um, and so I, I have to think, I mean, I, I would say there's, there's two obvious things that I would say could make an impact, maybe three. Um, the first one is, well, probably, yeah, maybe three. The first one is just simply, you know, it, the, the, the time frame for monetary policy to take effect is about a year. So, you know, first it starts with tech layoffs, but those, will slow, those are slowly building, right? I think Meta is talking about another round of layoffs, um, and you're seeing more and more companies announce layoffs. That, ima I imagine, will slowly filter through. And I, th I think right now the people that are getting laid off are, in general, having not so difficult of a time finding a new job just because the labor force participation rate is still so low that you can still find a job. You know, or at least I think most people are still able to find a job. And, and this is sort of backed up, um, you know, when you look at, at things like initial claims. You can see initial claims um, are, are still, despite all this, are still really low, you know? And, and when you see this, what it means to me is that the people that are getting laid off are, are not having a, that difficult of a time finding a new job. So, that's something to consider. Um, and you could also look at, at continued claims as well. And I, I think that one's been a little bit more elevated, right? Yeah, it's been a little bit more elevated. But it does go to show you that as of right now, the market, or sorry, the US economy has not really deteriorated in I think a way that a lot of people thought it would by this point. Um, so the, 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 first, the first obvious reason would be, you know, tech layoffs or the sort of the tip of the iceberg. And eventually that's going to filter through into, into other areas. If you think about, you know, if, if people have, uh, from the tech sector are not spending as much money that's going to reduce demand in other sectors and then those those companies are going to lay people off so it could just be one of those really slow aspects of the business cycle the layoff the the unemployment rate is usually like the last thing to move and then you know once that makes its move then we're, we're in a fresh uh, a fresh cycle the second thing i suppose that that could cause this would might not even be anything related to the federal reserve or the you know the the economy but it, it could just be uh, based around something like artificial intelligence. We've seen, you know, um, this sort of surge recently in, in AI. And you have to imagine that if, if that continues on, that could lead to layoffs, um, you know, of, of a lot of different sectors. If, if those jobs are no longer deemed necessary, if, if you can just type something into a bot and have it produce something similar, right? So that's a risk. And then the third risk that I think could make the unemployment rate go up is, and I, this is <laughs> this is kind of an interesting one, but you know student loans have been deferred for a long time, and and there's there's a risk that sometime middle this year, later this year, that people are going to start have to pay on paying on their student loans again, and, and that actually might make people, um, it might make the labor force participation rate go back up because you know now you've got bills you got to pay that you didn't you did not once have to pay. Uh, so again, a lot of different reasons to sort of think that eventually the unemployment rate will make a turn to the upside. But as I said before, the, the, the point is, yes, there's a lot of things that sort of suggest that, that this could happen. Um, there's a, sorry, let me start with the first one, right? There's a lot of things that suggest that this could happen, but it hasn't happened yet, right? It hasn't happened yet. And, and until it does, you're just not looking at a recession. Right. But it's probably going to happen at some point, but we just we just don't know when that's going to be. So, again, this first indicator is a measure of the level of activity in the labor markets. OK. And, and again, it's based upon a lot of different things. You also have this other one that is based on the second one. So this is the momentum indicator. And you can see that it's heading in the wrong direction. Now, before we talk more about that one, what I want to do is I want to look at the monthly change on this one and maybe take, say, like a seven-month SMA. So you can see that it's heading in the wrong direction, right? Like you can see here clearly that we're, we're not going in the, right, in the right direction for, you know, the, the economy is getting weaker. You can see the rate of change could also maybe mark the bottom. And arguably, this would have marked the bottom in 2001, but then we had, you know, we had, because um, uh, that was where the recession was, but then because of the events of 2001 and the fallout of that, you could argue that that's why we, we continue to go lower. It always shows you that no matter what, there's always a risk in the market, right? And this, like, this, this delusion that people can unilaterally call the bottom on anything without comparing what the risks might be is just simply unfounded, right? You have to consider what the risk is. 
And so you have this indicator, which shows we're trending in the wrong direction, but we're not there yet, right? Like we're not there yet. And that's why the market has continued to sort of ignore it for a long time. And then you have the momentum indicator, which shows you that the momentum has been slowly going to the downside, right? If we take, say, like a three-month SMA, you can see where, where it is right now. Now, there are periods in the past where it, it briefly went negative, and then it went back up, and we avoided a recession. That would be a soft landing, right? So that would be a soft landing if it, if it just sort of slowly comes down and, and is unable to really go into the depths like we did during the financial crisis over here or like we did there to the dot-com crash back over here. So that's what we're looking at. Um, but these are the things that we, we must consider as we, as we navigate financial markets. So we have you know, the labor market conditions index um, and the momentum indicator, both coming out of the Kansas City Fed. Hopefully this has been insightful for you to navigate financial markets. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Remember to check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium down in the description below. You can check that out. We have several different tiers, uh, including a free one. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.